The Old Covenant was a lengthy preparation to teach the need for Jesus and a New Covenant. Let's look at Jesus in the book of Exodus. Did all the prophets speak of Jesus? Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people! Your dull minds keep you from believing all that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interpreted for them the things written about himself in all the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets. Did Moses write about Jesus? Moses wrote about me, and if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me. Did Moses understand suffering for Christ? He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasure of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. Let's look at the Exodus. Who led Israel out of Egyptian slavery? While some translations use the words the Lord, the original Greek uses the name Jesus. Now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who didn't believe. Let's look at the Passover lamb. A flawless lamb was offered at Passover. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. This pictured Christ's sinlessness. Live in this way, knowing that you are not liberated by perishable things, like silver or gold from the empty lifestyle you inherited from your ancestors. Instead, you were liberated by the precious blood of Christ, like that of a flawless, spotless lamb. What about the bread from heaven? When Israel was hungry in the wilderness, God miraculously intervened. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I'll rain bread from heaven for you. This was a foretaste of a great miracle. Then Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say to you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never thirst. I am the bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I'll give is my flesh, which I'll give for the life of the world. Let's look at the miraculous feeding. The feeding of several crowds was not the first time Jesus was involved in feeding a multitude. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to old women and children. Now those who ate were 4,000 men, besides women and children. The miraculous feeding of a whole nation took place long before. He rained down manna on them to eat, and gave them food from the sky. Man ate the bread of angels. He sent them food to the full. What about the rock? After the Exodus, Israel complained about having no water, and so God provided. I'll be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Hit the rock. Water will come out of it and the people will be able to drink. Moses did so while Israel's elders watched. Metaphorically, the rock from which the water flowed was Christ. All of them ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, which flowed from the spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was Christ. What about living water? The Lord is the source of living water. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake you shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they've forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. That source of living water is Jesus. Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you're speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. 
The woman at the well thought that Jesus was colloquially referring to flowing water as opposed to stagnant. So he further explained what he actually meant. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto eternal life. At the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus publicly taught that life-giving water can flow within us. On the last and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and shouted, If you're thirsty, come to me and drink. Have faith in me, and you'll have life-giving water flowing from deep inside you, just as the scriptures say. God's future kingdom is pictured as a time when all will be led to those waters. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He'll lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So he tabernacled. Most translations fail to render the original Greek literally, that Jesus tented or tabernacled with us. The Word became flesh and made his home, that is, tabernacled or tented among us. We've seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Here's a seldom noticed connection between the Old Testament Feast of Tabernacles and the celebration of Christ's birth. The Festival of Tabernacles pointed to Jesus tabernacling or tenting with us in his incarnation. So too are our bodies like a tent. Our bodies are like tents, tabernacles, that we live in here on earth. But when these tents are destroyed, we know that God will give each of us a place to live. These homes will not be buildings someone has made, but they're in heaven and will last forever. The tabernacle or tent of meeting was also a picture of heaven. So Christ has now become the high priest over all good things that have come. He's entered that greater, more perfect tabernacle in heaven, which was not made by human hands and is not part of this created world. The high priest was the only one allowed to enter the Holy of Holies once a year on the Day of Atonement. In Jesus, every Christian is welcoming God's holy space behind the curtain at all times. Brothers and sisters, we have confidence that we can enter the Holy of Holies by means of Jesus' blood through a new and living way that he opened up for us through the curtain, which is his body, and we have a great high priest over God's house. Therefore, let's draw near with a genuine heart, with the certainty that our faith gives us, since our hearts are sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies are washed with pure water. Will you have a change of heart and mind, believe the good news of God's reign, and enter the heavenly holy place to be with God? You decide. Thank you.